Hello everyone! Magandang araw po sa ating lahat. Kamusta po kayo? Sana maganda ang araw natin kasi magagandang paksa ang tatalakay natin ngayon. Ako po si Regner Gayramon. Ako po ay nag-work sa PPA Training Institute. Welcome to the Basic Port Orientation Seminar. So, ang first module po natin ay the port. What is the port? Kung ako po ba ay tatanungin kung ano ang ibig sabihin ng port, alam ko ba ang kahulugan nito? Bilang isang cargo handling operator or port user or any port stakeholder doing business in the port, alam ko ba ang mundong ginagalawan ko? Mapapangalanan ko ba ang mga pasilidad, gamit at mga equipo na meron ito? Alam ko ba ang mga iba't ibang terminologies na ginagamit sa loob ng pantalan? So ito po ang apat na objectives natin. At the end of the orientation, you are expected to Number one, identify the importance of port to economic development and outline the port functions. Two, describe the different types of ports according to geographical location, ownership, and administrative systems of ports. Three, describe the use and purpose of port facilities that are essential in port operations. And number four, identify some of the common terminologies used in port operations. Okay, so what is the port? Ayon po sa PD-857, ang port ay isang lugar kung saan nagaganap ang iba't ibang activities na may kinalaman sa waterborne commerce. Dito nakahimpil ang mga barko para magkarga at magdiskarga ng kargamento, pati na rin ang mga pasahero. At sinasabi din na ang pantalan ay hindi lang yung dinadaungan ng barko, kundi sakop nito ang lahat ng land and water areas and the structures, equipment and facilities related to these functions. So ang pantalan ay daungan ng mga dumarating at umaalis na barko. Dito bumababa ang mga inbound passengers at dito rin sumasakay ang mga outbound passengers. At higit sa lahat, dito tayo nagkakaroon ng hanap buhay sa pamamagitan ng pagkarga at diskarga ng mga kargamento. Ito yung tinatawag nating cargo handling operations. Sinasabi rin na ang pantalan ay kanlungan ng mga barko. Sa mga pagkakataong may bagyo o sama ng panahon, dito sumisilong ang mga barko upang makaiwas sa banta ng malalakas na alon. Ang pantalan din ay major link ng transport chain from the manufacturer to the destination. Mahalaga ang pantalan dahil siya ang nagdudugto ng transport chain. Meron tayong iba't ibang transport links. Meron tayong airport para sa mga kargamento carried by air. Meron din tayong bus station para sa mga pasahero at kargamento by road o di kaya container truck galing sa manufacturer Railway Depot for cargoes carried by trains at higit sa lahat, seaport for cargoes carried by sea transport. So ang port ay major link ng transport chain dahil dito binababa at sinasakay ang kargamento mula sa iba't ibang modes of transport. So sa madaling salita, ang pantalan pala ay hindi lang yung lugar kung saan mismo dumidikit ang barko upang humimpil at magsakay at magbaba ng pasahero at magkarga at diskarga ng kargamento, kundi yung kabuuan ng land at water areas. Katulad dito sa aerial picture na nakikita natin, kung saan ang kabuuan ng pantalan ay yung lahat ng may kinalaman sa pagpapatakbo ng pantalan, kasama na dyan yung channels, roaches, navigational aids, breakwaters, anchorage, Pier, war, backup areas, warehouses, transit sheds, so on and so forth. Okay, so merong dalawang functions ang port. Ang primary function niya ay tumanggap ng barko to transport people and to load and unload cargoes. Ang secondary functions niya is to provide facilities and services to shipping and provide facilities and services to other port users. Example of these services are bunkering, shandling, 
tracking, warehousing, etc. What are the roles of ports in the Philippines? Sa domestic, napakahalaga ng pantalan sa inter-island trade and commerce. Ang Pilipinas bilang isang archipelago ay binubuo tayo ng napakaraming isla. Kaya naman, ang pantalan ay nagsisilbing tulay ng mga tao upang makatawid-tawid from one island to another. Ganoon din sa mga kargamento na iaangkat ang mga produkto ng isang lugar sa Mindanao, halimbawa, papunta sa ibang lugar sa Luzon at Visayas. Ang durian ng Davao ay natitikman ng mga taga Cebu. Ang matamis na lansones ng Kamigin ay nakakarating sa Katagalugan. Ang tuna ng Sarangani ay naihahain ng sariwa sa hapagkainan ng mga taga Metro Manila. Kung saan may pantalan, mayroong development na nangyayari because the port serves as the nucleus for development. Ganun din sa international, napakahalaga ng ports sa global trade and commerce. Ang mga produkto ng Europa at Amerika ay napapakinabangan ng mga taga-Asya at iba pang lugar sa mundo and vice versa. Ang palitan ng produkto at serbisyo sa iba't ibang dako ng mundo ay nagbibigay daan sa globalization na nangyayari sa salukuyan. More than 80% of world trade is carried by sea, constituting the most important means of transport of goods. Do you know that as we speak, there are about 11 billion tons of cargoes being moved around the world? You could just imagine the huge volume of cargoes being carried by sea around the world. Ito ay dahil limitado lamang ang maaaring ikarga sa aeroplano dahil may mga weight restrictions sa aeroplano. Ang mga pasahero nga, meron lang 20 kilos na baggage allowance. Yung iba, 10 kilos lang. If you hope to carry more, you have to purchase for your extra baggage. Kaya naman, karamihan ng mga kargamento ay isinasakay sa barko dahil bukod sa mas marami kang pwedeng ikarga nito, mas mura ang transport cost ng barko. So the port is the nucleus for development. Siya ang sentro at dahilan kung bakit nagkakaroon ng pagunlad sa isang lugar o bansa. Matatawag natin na barometer ang port in the determination of the country's economy. Ang iba't ibang sektor ng ekonomiya, agriculture, trade and commerce, rural development, industrial development, and employment ay lumalago kapag may pantalan. Ang pantalan bilang link ng logistics chain ay nagbibigay sigla ng mga ito. There are roles and functions of the port. Sa economic function, it generates revenues from the facilities constructed by the national government. How? By the levy of port dues such as berthing, anchorage, usage, wharfage, pilotage, etc. Siyempre, namuhunan ang gobyerno sa pagpapagawa ng mga struktura at pagdidad upang matugunan ang mga needs ng iba't ibang port users and stakeholders ng pantalan, kagaya ng pier, wharf, dredging activities, roro ramps, at iba pang port structures. Kaya po naniningil ng port juice ang government natin. Okay, so pupunta na tayo sa types of ports. Siyempre, bilang isang port user, dapat alam natin kung ano-ano ang types of ports. A port can be classified according to these three. Geographical, Administration, and Ship Cargo Handle. Kapag geographical location, meron tayong coastal port kung saan ang ganitong pantalan ay situated or established siya along the coast. Tandaan niya lang, kapag along the coast, ito ay coastal port. Kapag naman ang isang pantalan ay matatagpuan alongside the river, inland port naman ang tawag sa kanya. Meron ding tinatawag na seaward port. Ito naman ay situated medyo malayo-layo ng konte sa isang coastal area. Maaring ang lalim ng tubig sa coastal area na yan ay mababaw lamang kung kaya kinakailangan na ang pantalan ay doon i-co-construct sa malalim na bahagi ng tubig 
kasi mas natural ang lalim nito at hindi na mga kailangan ng dredging activity that will of course entail costs. A port can also be classified according to administration. Kapag state-owned port, ito ay pagmamayari ng gobyerno. The government is in charge of the construction, maintenance, and management of ports under its system. Isa lang ang PPA na halimbawa ng isang state-owned port. Meron pang iba, merong Cebu Port Authority, Subic Bay Metropolitan Authority, at iba pa. May tinatawag din na municipal ports. In this system, the management and operations of the port belongs to the municipality where the port is situated. May mga ports ang PPA na dati-dati ay under ng port system nito pero nagkaroon ng devolution. Ibig sabihin na ilipat na sa isang munisipyo ang administration ng isang port na dati-dati ay nasa ilalim ng pangasiwa ng PPA. Meron ding tinatawag na autonomous ports. In this system, the administration of the port is entrusted to an autonomous body especially established by Congress. Example of this is the Regional Port Management Authority which is under the Bangsamoro Autonomous Region in Muslim Mindanao. Private ports are owned and operated by a private company. Examples are Harbor Center Port Terminal Incorporated, Total Philippines Corporation, Petron Corporation, Price Gas Incorporated, and Rio Tuba Nickel Mining Corporation. Now let's go to cargo and ship handle. Dito malalaman natin ang type of port according to the cargoes being handled in the port. If the cargoes being handled in the port are purely containerized cargoes, then we call it container terminal. Example of this type of port is the MICT, which is operated by ICTSI. Wala po kayong ibang makikita dito na ibang kargamento, kundi puro nakalagay sa boxes. In like manner, the type of vessels calling at this port are also purely container ship. Wala po kayong makikita conventional vessel dito kasi container ship lang ang hinahandle nila. Next is brake bulk terminal or conventional terminal. Kapag ang kargamento na dumadaan sa port na ito ay brake bulk or conventional cargo, ang tawag din dyan sa terminal na yan ay brake bulk terminal or conventional terminal. Please don't be confused. Another name for brake bulk is conventional. This is where cargoes are loaded and unloaded in unitized form such as palletized, bagged, strapped, bundled, drummed, and freighted. Lastly, bulk terminal. Bulk terminal is a terminal where bulk cargoes are handled such as grain, coal, and iron ore. So, tapos na tayo sa different types of ports. Punta naman tayo sa port facilities. As port workers or port users, it is incumbent upon us to know what are the different facilities found in the port. Isa-isahin po natin ang mga ito. Una, pier. Ang pier ay isang struktura which is built projecting towards the sea but not parallel to the coastline. So kung hindi siya parallel, ito po ay naka-perpendicular or naka-90 degrees po ito sa coastline. Samantala, ang wharf naman is a continuous structure built parallel to the coastline or alongside as shown in the second picture. So kung kayo po ay tatanungin, alin sa dalawa ang mas economical, ibig sabihin mas marami ang Pwedeng ma-accommodate ng barko, ang pier po ba or wharf? Siyempre, mas maraming ma-accommodate ng vessel ang pier dahil mas malaki ang area niya kumpara sa wharf. Another facility in the port is the key. Ang tamang pagbigkas po nito ay key, not way. So ang key is a place where vessels can be tied up at dito rin nakikita ang bollard at ang fender. Sa bollard, tinatali ang mooring lines ng barko at ang fenders naman ay nagsisilbing protection o cushion ng pier or wharf para hindi ito madaling masira kapag dumidikit na ang barko. 
Ang apron naman ay area between the transit shed and the key wall used as an operations area for forklift and other cargo moving equipment. This is the busiest area in the port and one of the most dangerous areas kasi po maraming aksidente ang nakitatala po dito. Kaya dapat dobli ingat po tayo kapag tayo po ay nagagawin sa area na ito ng pantalan. Ang anchorage naman ay isang port facility kung saan a vessel can drop anchor for many reasons. Maaaring ang barko ay naghihintay ng boarding formalities. Pwede rin ito ay ginagamit for ship side operations kung ang kargamento ay hindi pinapayagang i-unload sa berth katulad ng class 1 na DG or dangerous goods which is explosive o kaya naman ay ang barko ay masyadong maliit at hindi kaya nito ang level ng tubig sa pantalan maaring ito ay mababaw para sa isang malaking barko kung kaya kinakailangan ship side operations ang gagawin ang anchorage ay nagsisilbi din itong turning basin ng mga barko dito rin sumisilong ang mga barko for sheltering purposes sa panahon ng bagyo upang makaiwas sa mga alon sa laot. Ang roro ramp naman ay ginagamit ng mga pasahero at mga crew ng barko to enter or exit the ship and it is also used to allow cargoes to be rolled on and off the vessel. The gate facility is where the control of people, vehicles and goods are done. The gate inspector verifies and reviews the documents and the cargoes to ensure cargo handling charges and other for tariff have been paid. So, importante po na ang gate inspector ay matalas at mabusisi sa pag-verify at pag-review ng mga papers kasi po dito madalas nalulusutan ang isang cargo handling operator. Minsan, may mga parilalabas na hindi pa bayad. Pilot boarding station is a designated place inside a harbor where vessels intending to berth are met by the pilot so that the pilot maneuvers the vessel into the port. Ang terminal building naman ay isang gusali kung saan nag-uopisina ang mga kawani ng port authority, cargo handling operators, and the different agencies involved in the port like Bureau of Customs, Maritime Industry Authority, Philippine Coast Guard, Bureau of Quarantine, Bureau of Immigration, and other agencies performing specialized functions like Bureau of Forestry, Fiber Industry Development Authority, Philippine Coconut Authority, Bureau of Animal Industry, Bureau of Fisheries and Aquatic Resources, National Food Authority, and Philippine National Police. Fenders are devices used to protect the pier or wharf, serving as cushion from shock when a vessel is in contact with the key wall. Tinatawag rin itong bumper or shock absorber. We now go to storage facility. Container yard is a storage facility wherein containers are accepted and stored on the terminal before they are loaded to the vessel. At ang container freight station naman ay isang location for receiving of cargoes to be loaded into containers. So, Sa container freight station, nangyayari ang consolidation of cargoes. Dito binubuksan ang containers upang ilabas ang mga goods that are intended to be offloaded sa port na yan. Isasara ulit ang container at isasakay ulit sa barko upang dalhin sa next port of call upang yung ibang laman naman ng cargoes ay i-unload. Another storage facility is the transit shed. It is a place where inbound cargoes are kept while waiting to be collected by inland transport and outbound cargoes are assembled and sorted in readiness for loading aboard a vessel. In short, ang transit shed is for temporary storage of goods para sa mga kargamentong pansamantala lamang po. Ang warehouse naman po ay para sa mga kargamentong pangmatagalan ang pag-impact nito. It is a structure used for storage of cargoes for a long period of time. Usually, ang warehouse ay matatagpuan sa back-up area. Open storage areas. The area can either be situated on both ends of the key shed or behind the rear side of it. 
intended for various types of cargoes that are too long or too large to be admitted and stored inside a warehouse, such as heavy lift, bundle, and some dangerous goods. So kapag po ang kargamento ay oversized na hindi kayang ipasok sa transit shed o kaya naman ay heavy lift, bundled, and some cargoes that are dangerous in nature ay dito sa open storage areas po nilalagay at tinatakpan ng kapal. Ang river station naman ay isang napakahalagang storage facility kung saan dito iniimbak o kinakamada ang mga refrigerated cargoes in reefer containers kagaya ng medicines, frozen products like ice cream, meats, fish, fruits and vegetables, and other cargoes with temperature limitation. Dangerous cargo areas are designated areas for storage of dangerous goods. In these areas, proper segregation scheme has to be strictly observed and followed in accordance to the provisions set forth by the International Dangerous Goods Code or IMDG. And this area should be regularly inspected by a safety officer or members of the safety committee in order to ensure that the DGs or dangerous goods are in good condition, no leakage, no spillage, and the stringent segregation rules are followed. At dapat din properly illuminated and the security should be round the clock para hindi masabotahe ng mga masamang loob. Marahil ay hindi lingit sa kaalaman ng lahat ang nangyari sa Beirut in Lebanon kung saan mayroong massive explosion ang nangyari sa port nito noong August 4, 2020 lang. It is still under investigation but according to the news, the initial report points to negligence and not a terrorist attack. There was lack of security and maybe there was no proper segregation being done. Nakaimbak ang 2,750 tons of ammonium nitrate sa loob ng anim na taon na walang kaukulang safety measures ang nakalatag para dito. Ang ammonium nitrate ay isang sangkap para sa fertilizer pero ginagamit din na sangkap sa paggawa ng bomba. Di umano ay may nasusunog malapit sa pinagimbakan ng ammonium nitrate na siyang naging sanhi ng pagsabog nito. Hundreds have died and thousands were injured in the blast. Pag-uusapan din natin ang Port Authority na siyang namamahala sa mga government ports ng ating bansa under its port system. Ito ang Philippine Ports Authority o PPA. So ito po ang building ng head office namin located along Bonifacio Drive, South Harbor Port Area, Manila. Prior to the creation of PPA, the Port Administration was merged with the traditional function of revenue collection of the Bureau of Customs while ports and harbor maintenance and construction was done by the Department of Public Works. Ibig sabihin, dalawang sangay ng gobyerno ang nagtulong-tulong upang magampanan ang pagpapatakbo ng mga pantalan sa Pilipinas. Ang BOC Bukod sa kanyang revenue collection na function ay sharing gumagawa ng port administration at ang ports and harbor maintenance and construction ay pangangasiwa naman ng Department of Public Works. The Philippine Ports Authority was therefore created by virtue of Presidential Decree Number no. 505 in 1974 which was subsequently amended by PD number 857 in December 1975 and a string of executive orders issued between 1978 and 1987. The Presidential Decree number 857, which now serves as the revised charter of PPA, was issued to broaden the function of PPA to implement an integrated program for planning, development, financing, operation and maintenance of ports. So nauna muna ang PD-505 noong 1974 at isang taon lang ang pagitan ng ma-amend ito ng PD-857 na siyang nagpapalawak ng saklaw at function ng PPA sa alinmang programa na may kaugnayan sa planning, development, financing, operation and maintenance of ports. 
Ano ang mandate ng PPA? To establish, develop, regulate, manage, and operate a rationalized national port system in support of trade and national development. At ang functions ni PPA ay ang mga sumusunod. Port Services Administration, Port Development, Dredging Services, General Management and Administration, Port Estate Administration, and Revenue Generation. By the way, kunting trivia po tayo at kunting pagmamalaki na rin sa mga accomplishments ng PPA. During the last 42 years, meaning ang datos na ito ay hanggang noong 2016, the PPA spent 128 billion para po sa port development and 14.9 billion pesos for repairs and maintenance of port facilities without subsidy from the national government. At dito po nagtatapos ang module na ito, ang the port. At sana po ay may napupulot kayo munting kaalaman sa ating talakayan. Ito po ang inyong lingkod. Regner Gay Ramon, see you around soon. Thank you for your time and thank you for listening. Magandang araw po. Welcome to Module 2 on Port Services. Ako nga pala po si Ray Dalmoro Jr., isa ring manggagawa ng pantalan na nakatalaga sa Port Operations and Services Department ng Philippine Ports Authority o PPA. Sa Module 2, pag-uusapan po natin ang iba't ibang uri ng serbisyo sa pantalan na maaring gampanan at ipagkaloob ng pribadong sektor. Port services are one of the essential mechanisms to ensure proper execution of the different commercial activities taking place at every single port. Our objective in this module is to define the different port services rendered to vessels, cargoes, and passengers as well as ancillary services or support services indirectly related to port operations. Let us now proceed with Module 2. Let's start with port services rendered to vessels. These are services performed during the arrival, stay and departure of a vessel which are necessary for the smooth conduct of ship operation at the port. First, we have pilotage services. The service of piloting a vessel from the pilot boarding station to anchorage or berth and vice versa. This includes maneuvering of vessels during shifting operations. Piloted service is one of the inherent functions of PPA which may be rendered by the authority through the authorized pilot association designated to undertake the service in a particular pilotage district. Kinukuha ang serbisyo ng mga piloto upang ligtas na magabayan ang mga barko sa pagpasok at paglabas sa pantalan o kaya ay kung delikado ang paglalayag, lalo na kung di familiar ang shipmaster sa approaches ng pantalan. Towing Tugging Services The service of pulling and or pushing of vessels with the help of a watercraft. The PPA shall provide tug assistance services through duly accredited tug companies which provide such service on a non-exclusive basis. No operator shall provide tug assistance within the harbor limits unless in a position of a permit issued by PPA, subject to the terms and conditions as it may deem proper, in addition to the requirements of other agencies. The tugboat operator shall provide the equipment needed to render efficient towing tugging service. Mooring and mooring operations. The service of securing and releasing the line of a vessel, otherwise making fast and letting go of lines from bollard or any securing devices on dock. The complexities of this operation involve factors such as location of the port, depth of the berth, tidal difference, and the port's exposure to weather forces. Masusing pagingat ang kailangang gawin sa paghandle ng mooring lines for safe berthing and unberthing of vessels sa pantala. Bumpering Services The service of supplying and delivering oil, gasoline, grease, lubricant, 
and oil products and materials to vessels, ships, tugboats, and other seagoing crafts. Ito ay ang pagkakarga ng crudo sa mga barko at maaari itong gawin onshore or offshore. Onshore bunkering involves the transfer of fuels on a shore-to-ship basis from an onshore facility, whereas offshore bunkering involves the transfer of fuels on a ship-to-ship -ship basis. Lighter rigs barging services The service of loading and loading of goods by means of lighters or barges. Ang lighter rigs ay isang operasyon na tumutubon sa pag-transfer ng mga kargamento tulad ng crude oil, liquefied gas, bulk cargoes, and various petroleum products. Ang pag-transfer na ito ay nagaganap sa pagitan ng dalawang mukebang sasakyang pangdagat o sa pagitan ng motor vessel and daughter vessel. The receiving ship is called the daughter vessel and the main delivery vessel is called the mother vessel. Ang proseso nito ay kadalas ginagawa sa angkorahe ng pagtalat to reduce vessel's draft before entering the port. Next, we have channeling services. The service of supplying food items, groceries, consumables, and other provisions for the crew of the vessels and other seagoing crafts docked at piers, wharves, or anchorage. The responsibility of providing all these supplies to the vessel is with the ship channelers. May ilang panahon ang kailangan sa pag-deliver ng mga ito lalo na kung commercial ship ang susuplayan. Dahil karamihan sa turnaround ng mga commercial ships ay mabilis, kailangan ma deliver sa lalong mataling panahon ang mga pangailangan ng crew ng bank. Also, we have vessel repair maintenance. The service of providing repairs due to breakdown of vessels or hot works and maintenance work while the vessel is dry dock or There are certain tasks which cannot be completed by the vessel's crew engineers either due to specialized knowledge and skill requirement or due to immense complexity or sheer size of the task. Maaaring ang pagpukumpuni na kailangan gawin kung ang barko ay nakadaong sa pantala. Sa ganitong sitwasyon, ito ay pinapaayos sa mga service provider na nagtutungkuni ng mga bak. Then we have Waste Disposal Services. The service of collecting, handling, and disposal of oil, sludge, garbage, and other kinds of wastes from ships and other establishments or facilities inside the port. Ships produce and accumulate a surprising amount of waste which has to be stored on board until the next port of call. During this time of heightened environmental awareness, the way in which this waste is handled at the destination port is extremely important. There are national legislations and international instruments which set down rules on the correct processes in handling ships wastes. Ships must provide the destination port with prior notification of their onboard waste, which then they must discharge at the port and pay a mandatory fee to contribute towards the cost incurred by the port in providing waste reception and treatment facilities. Watering Services The service of supplying fresh water to vessels at birth or at anchorage. Such service may also be provided to port users and other stakeholders within the port premises. Water supply for potable purposes on board ship should be provided with sanitary safeguards in a multiple barrier system in order to prevent contamination or pollution during ship operation. We now move on to cargo services or port services rendered to cargo. Cargo services are services involving handling of cargo but not limited to stevedoring, container handling, and other related services. In the Philippines, we used to have two types of cargo handling services. First, the cargo handling activities done on dock which is called arrest. And second, the stevedoring 
which are activities done on board the vessel. Ngayon, ang tawag natin sa ginagawa on board at on dock ay stevedoring na lang. For shore-based cargo handling service, the following activities are performed. Receive and load cargoes from and to ship's tackle with the use of a dock van and cargo handling gears and equipment. Check cargo by marks and quantity. Acknowledge and sign tally sheets. Deliver or transfer cargo onto or receive from truck's tail of consignee or shipper's transportation or ship's tackle. Provide manpower, equipment, and such other necessary cargo handling gears for receiving, stowing, delivery, transfer, shifting, and palletizing of cargo. For stevedoring service, the following are work performed on board vessel. Stowing inside hatches, compartments, and on deck or open cargo spaces on board vessel. Rigging and unrigging of ship's gear, opening and closing of hatches. Provision of standard stevedoring gears and equipment as required by cargo type. Cargo checking services. The service of tallying marks, counter marks, and checking of numbers, quantity, conditions of cargo, whether in good or bad order, and measurements of brake bulk cargoes. It is usually performed by duly authorized cargo checkers other than the terminal or cargo handling operator. Cargo Surveying Services The service of inspecting and determining the condition of cargo or extent of damage, if any, including the appraisal thereof for insurance and other related purposes. Shipping companies may call for a survey to gain better understanding of some unusual commodity for shipping. Surveyors may be called upon by shippers for advice on packaging, handling, and transport. Generally, the main purpose of cargo surveying is to confirm and verify the quantity and quality of the shipment in relation to the goods specification agreed upon between parties. Specifically, Ang mga cargo surveyor ay siyang kumikilala at nag-a-assess kung may anumang sira sa kargamento at inire-report ito upang makatulong sa mga customer sa pagbawi ng mga nawala o nasirang kargamento. Next, we have Cargo Forwarding Hauling Trucking. The service of providing trucks and other vehicles for delivery and movement of cargoes from to a port. Ang mga truckers ang siyang nagdi-deliver ng mga kargamento mula sa iba't ibang panig ng Pilipinas papunta sa mga destinasyon nito sa tamang oras at maayos na kondisyon. Let us now move on to passenger services. For passenger services, we have booking, ticketing office, canteen services, communication services, shops and stores, shuttle or shuttling services, water tax services, and porterage services. Ang mga submission ito ay pinagkakalog sa mga incoming at outgoing passengers upang matugunan ang kanilang mga pangangailangan at magbigyang paghinghawahan habang sila ay nasa passenger terminal bill. Ano-ano ba ang mga pahulugan? na ang bawat isa sa mga passenger terminal services. Una, ang booking ticketing service. It is the service of selling and reserving book tickets for seeing going passengers. Canteen services. The service of selling food and beverages within the passenger terminal building or in a specified area within the office building to serve employees Port workers, occupants, and passengers thereat. Communication services. The service of providing facilities and means of communication to port users within the port premises. Shops and stores. 
the service of putting convenience stores, souvenir shops, and other similar stalls inside the passenger terminal. Shuttle or shuttling services. The service of providing vehicles for movement of passengers within the port premises. Water taxi service. The service of ferrying ships to agents, provisions, and passengers to and from a vessel at birth or anchorage by means of a small vessel or craft. Porterage services. The service of carrying goods, baggage, and luggage for passengers, usually rendered by porters. Passenger terminal building operation. The service involving lease, management, operation and maintenance of a passenger terminal building and all its facilities and existing structures thereafter. The passenger terminal usually have passenger security facilities and amenities such as security inspection area, walk-through x-ray, ballistic room, clean toilets, ecumenical room, clinic, children play area, nursing mother, diaper changing room, wash area, family lunch, and free Wi-Fi among others, which are provided by the passenger terminal. Port Terminal Operation the services involving lease management, operation, development, and maintenance of the entire port, including all the facilities and existing structures thereat. Port terminal services involves the provision of all the services involved under this module. The services to be provided include, but not limited to, the following. Container terminal management, passenger terminal management, stevedoring services, waste and shore reception facility management, porterage services, bagging services, rural cargo services, parking, storage, water distribution services, security services, ancillary and other port-related services. Port terminal services also involve the implementation of infrastructure projects and installation of automation and other systems that will modernize a particular port. Let us now move on to ancillary services. Cleaning services. The service of cleaning decks, compartments, or hatches of cargo and passenger vessels at birth or anchorage. It is not always possible for a ship's crew to keep up the necessary level of cleanliness required to carry sensitive cargo. It is for this reason na ang mga kumpanyang nagbibigay ng mga vessel cleaning services ay kailangan accredited ng PPA o may karampatang permit to open. Container Repair this is the service of undertaking repairs on containers within the port premises. The continuous loading and unloading of containers and the frequent transport can lead to damages or wear out of containers. Examples are repairing container floors, leveling container walls, replacing container door ceiling, patching container holes and filling cracks, etc. These damages may cause the shipping container to fail the certification standards and a non-certified container may not be used for safe transport. Therefore, it is essential to repair the containers and ask service from the companies doing container repair. Fumigation The service of disinfecting containers or ships compartments Fumigating shipping containers are usually a standard protocol for many countries by suffocating or poisoning the pests as it is feared to carry diseases. A fumigation certificate is issued by the fumigator by obtaining approval 
or fumigation from a licensing authority. Most countries will not allow import of goods without a fumigation certificate. Then we have weighbridge truck scale. The service of determining the weight measurement of outbound containers or cargoes for purposes of vessel stowage planning. The weigh bridge truck scale are placed on port entrance to weigh incoming and outgoing vehicles. The overall goal is to achieve effective control of overloading as a basis for avoiding accidents at sea and accelerated deterioration of road networks and, as a consequence, ensure safety and reduce total transport costs. Ang iba pang auxiliary services na maaaring ipagkaloob sa pagtalan ay ang laundry services at reproduction services. For ship's crews and other port personnel who are unable to find time to wash their clothes and other similar items, laundry services are sought. Also, passengers may find the need to use the reproduction services to replicate important and crucial documents. Thus, Companies who offer these services can apply for permit to operate in the And lastly, we have other services. This refers to services which are not listed but may be classified by PPA as a port service. We may not be able to identify all the services that may be rendered at Philippine ports, hence the inclusion of other port services. Port operations is so dynamic that the provision of services not identified in this module, such as those relating to small businesses, tourism, financing, health, and safety, may eventually be required inside the ports and therefore be deemed considered as port services. Nais ko pong ipaalala na hindi po lahat ng servisyong nabanggit sa module na ito ay sakop ng permit to operate o PTO. May mga port services po na nangangailangang dumaan sa selection process na naaayon sa batas o mga panuntunan bago mapagkalooban ng kontrata o appointment. It is important to reiterate that PPA is mandated to provide port services, whether on its own, by contract or otherwise, in ports nationwide. Therefore, kung kayo po ay nag apply ng PTO o nabigyan na kayo ng PTO, you agree to be the arm and extension of PPA in the provision of quality port services and utilize the port properly in your transaction and conduct of business. Nais ko pong ipaalala na ang PTO po ay hindi isang karapatan but rather a privilege accorded by PPA to a port service provider or port user to be able to transact and do business inside the port. The PTO may be revoked or cancelled anytime by the authority for violation or non-compliance with the terms and conditions of the PTO including PPA existing rules and regulations. Sa pagtatapos po ng Module 2, Nais ko po kayong pasalamatan sa inyong interes na maging parte at tagapagtaguyod ng ating mga pantalan. Kung kayo po ay may katanungan o hindi ganap na nauunawaan sa ating mga port services, huwag po kayong mag-aatubiling lumapit o makipag-ugnayan sa mga mababait na PPA officials and employees na nakatalaga sa Port Management Office o PMO na sumasakop sa inyong pantalan. Sa isang pulupulong bansa, kagaya ng Pilipinas, na umaasa sa pandagat na transportasyon sa paghahatid ng mga tao, kargamento, at mga pangangailangan natin sa araw-araw. Nananalig po ako na kaisa kayo ng PPA sa pagbibigay ng halaga sa papel na ginagampanan ng mga pantalan sa buhay ng bawat Pilipino, lalo na po sa panahon ng pandemya o mga kalamidad. Muli po, ako ay nagpapasalamat sa inyo at mag-ingat po tayong lahat. This ends Module 2 on Port Services.
In this module, I will be discussing briefly port safety. I'm sure lahat tayo ay nagdanais na ligtas tayo sa ating araw-araw na pagtatrabaho. Kaya alamin natin kung ano-ano ang ating tungkulin o responsibilidad para maging safe at productive tayo. Ako nga pala po si Maria Christine M. Baudro ng PMO NCR South. Ang objectives po ng module na ito ay number one, know the objectives of the safety and health in ports specified in the PPA Orange Book. Number two, understand the roles and responsibilities of port employers, contractors, port workers. At ang pangatlo ay identify the requirements of the Orange Book regulations on key areas. Alam po ba ninyo na ang pantalan ay isang delikado o hazardous na workplace? What makes the ports hazardous? Nandiyan po ang presensya ng maraming ekipo na gumagalaw lagi para ma-load o ma-unload ang mga kargamento sa paraan ng mabilis pero dapat may pag-iingat din. May mga kargamento tayong itinataas at ipinababa na pwedeng mahulog o makatama. At may mga istiba din kailangang umakyat para ilash o unlash ang ibang kargamento. Para sa mga operators ng malalaking ekipo tulad ng mga reach stopper at stradle carrier, maaaring ang kanilang view mula sa gabi ay limitado o di kaya'y natatakpan. Yung size din ng pantalan at mga activities dito, maaaring magsasabi sa ating na busy ang isang pantalan. At kapag busy, aasahan natin yung constant movement of equipment, cargoes and people. Kaya mas delikado siya. Mas lalong nagiging delikado ang pantalan kapag ang operations nito ay 24-7. Walang hinto. Lalo na sa gabi at sa mga oras na medyo masungit ang panahon. At marami pang mga bagay na nakakadagdag sa pagiging delikado ng isang pantalan. At dahil nito, accidents can happen. Magpapakita po ako ng ilang larawan ng mga aksidente, yung ilan ay masasabi natin dati. Nakita natin kung gaano kadelikado ang ibang gawain sa pantalan. Saan nga ba madalas nangyayari ang isang aksidente sa loob ng pantalan? Ayon sa mga datos, di lamang dito sa ating bansa, pati na rin sa mga pantalan sa ibang bansa, madalas o halos 50% ng mga aksidente sa isang conventional terminal ay nangyayari sa tear duct, key and apron, aboard ship, others, roadways, aisles, walkways, and storage area. At sa isang container terminal naman, 50% ng mga aksidente ay nangyayari sa container yard, aboard ship, others, workshops, and roadways. Kung kaya'y mahalaga na natin natin sa isip ang ating kaligtasan at mag-iba to take safety first. At para maging safe tayo o malayo sa diskasya, kailangan natin mag-substantially comply with accepted safety standards and existing rules and regulations. So we need to know the rules and follow them. Ang mga patakaran ng PPU patungkol sa safety, health, and environment ay nakapaloob sa isang regulasyon na mas kilala sa tawag na Orange Book. Ito ay para sa mga port users, CHOs, operators of ancillary services, operators of other similar or related services. Ang layunin nito ay to ensure safety and protection of all port users, passengers, and port workers doing business in ports, provide safe and efficient service to shipping companies and port clientele who are engaged in waterborne commerce and using the ports as point of, of conveyance for their goods and cargoes. Continually educate and uplift the interest of port users, port workers, and clientele to the 
to safety and health issues by providing accessible and user-friendly policies, including signages and information advertisements in courts. Under this regulation, court employers have responsibilities to provide and maintain the workplace, plan and equipment they own, control or operate in safe condition. They shall also provide up-to-date written information on their safe use and operation, ensure that all court workers are adequately instructed in the hazards of their respective occupations and the precautions that they are necessary to avoid accidents and injuries, ensure that all court workers are informed of national or local legal requirements relating to their protection, and provide appropriate supervision to ensure that the conditions of court workers are as safe and healthy as possible and that relevant safe systems of work are followed. If you are a contractor, ito po ang inyong mga kailangan gawin. Supply workers who are appropriately trained and competent to perform the work they are required to do in court areas. Number two po, workers are to be made aware of the particular hazards of the port areas in which they are to work and the hazards and precautions to be taken in connection with port work in general and in any local rules. Workers are also supervised appropriately. All port infrastructures and equipment that they supply or use are of sound construction and properly maintained in a safe condition. Inform others who may be affected by their activities of such information as necessary and cooperate with the authority and other pertinent entities on matters that promote safety and health in courts. Kung kayo naman ay isang court worker o kaya ay pinuprovide na service sa loob ng pantalan, kailangan ninyong maging aware o conscious sa mga panganib sa trabaho at i-grab ang pagkakataon na matuto mula sa isang training o iba pang pinagmumula ng informasyon. Dapat alamin kung paano gawin ang isang trabaho o task ng ligtas. Comply strictly o sumunod sa lahat ng safety rules and instructions sa lahat ng panahin. Gamitin ng tama ang mga safeguards, safety devices, and other appliances na ibinigay sa iyo. Iwasan ang mga careless or reckless practices or actions na maaaring magdulot ng aksidente o pagkasugot ng tao at iba pang tao. When entering the port, ano-ano dapat ang ating mga isaalang-alang para maging ligtas tayo? Bago po tayo pumasok sa pantalan para magtrabaho, i-make sure po natin na ang ating katawan ay nasa magandang kondisyon. Hindi ko lang tinutukoy ang physical na pangangatawan, kundi ang ating emosyon at mental conditions din. Mahirap magtrabaho kung ikay maraming iniisip na problema o kaya'y may hangover kasi nakukompromiso ang ating focus sa ating mga ginagawa na maaaring magdulot naman ng distrasya. Pagpasok natin sa pantalan, nire-require na ang isang port personnel and other personnels other than the stevedores shall wear, while within the operational areas, the necessary personal protective equipment or PPE na pinoprovide ng ating kumpanya. Ano-ano nga ba ang PPE na kailangan? Hard hat, safety shoes, reflectorized vest or uniform, and if needed, gloves, mask, goggles, and etc. Kapag tayo po ay nasa loob na ng pantalan, Kinakailangan po nating sundin ang traffic at safety regulations upang maiwasan ang distrasya. Alalahanin na nasa loob ng pantalan ay mga aring hazards na pwedeng maging sanhi ng distrasya. Kaya sundin ang mga international symbols and warning signs. Tulad ng paggamit ng mga itinakdang daanan o designated access roads and walkways. Maging alerto sa mga gumagalaw matakbong ekwipo at sasakyan, lalo na sa mga intersections, mga at hindi kayo mapansin ng mga operator o driver pag ikaw ay nasa dinatawag the blind spot. Tumamit ng shuttle service kung meron para sa movement sa loob ng pantalan. 
Ito ay para maiwasan ang distrasya sa mga naglalakad sa loob ng operational area at maging efficient ang paggalaw ng mga ekipo. Kung ikaw naman ay nagmamaneho ng isang truck or other vehicles, siguraduhin na ang inyong takbo ay di lalampas sa tinakdang speed limit na kadalasan ay bibibilis sa 20 kph. Meron pong designated parking or staging areas para sa private vehicles at para sa mga trucks. So mag-park sa tamang lugar nang maiwasang maharakan ang daloy ng trapiko at maiwasan din ang congestion. Alin sunod na rin sa ating mga batas at alituntun. Ang manigarinyo po sa loob ng pantalan ay mahigpit na ipinagbabawal. Ito ay para sa proteksyon ng ating kalusugan at gayon din sa ating kaligtasan sapagkat may mga flammable cargos tayo sa loob ng pantalan. Muli, when inside the port, Isipin lagi ang kaligtasan mo at ng ibang mga tao. Have a safe and productive day at port.